In part 1, galaxies were squished on the fabric of the cosmos. We represented them as dots of whiteout and the surface of a balloon as the fabric of the cosmos, which we then blew as though we were expanding the universe. Galaxies and even vacuum have been squished on the surface of the balloon. They have only width and length. What is inside and outside the balloon? The other dimension that wasn't squished. Time. The radius of the balloon is the time axis. So what's inside the balloon? The past. And what's outside the balloon? The future. Speed is always measured relative to something. That of a car crash by the speed of one car relative to the other. And relative to us, the furthest observed galaxies are moving away faster than the speed of light. How is this possible? Nothing can go faster than the speed of light. The galaxies are not moving, but being carried by the fabric of the expanding universe. Much like the drops of whiteout are not moving on their own, but are carried by the plastic of the expanding balloon. In 1619, Johannes Kepler showed that Mars followed an elliptical orbit around the Sun. This went against the dogma in which the circle was the perfect figure, and God having made the planets could not have made them move in any path other than perfect, that is a circle. Today, the expansion of the universe is again interacting with dogma. On the one hand, it suggests a beginning to the cosmos, a creation event. On the other hand, it refutes this event because the expanding cosmos is in constant evolution. How many civilizations could inhabit a galaxy? Is the interior of stars like parties thrown by Edgar Allan Poe? Is astronomy influenced by pop culture? If these questions interest you, then take a look at The Sinusoidal Spaghetti, a scientific novel about an astronomer who discovers a message from outer space and a psychiatrist who doesn't believe him. Go to spacegeek.org book.